Today, as stocks rose, there emerged another of those getting really familiar outrages from downtown Manhattan. With the collapse of some of the nation's biggest banks and the taxpayer bailout, Wall Street was supposed to do without its beloved bonuses this year. Merrill Lynch, for example, lost $11 billion and cut 30,000 jobs this year, surviving through a merger with Bank of America. Helping that merger happen? Billions in taxpayer dollars provided by the Treasury Department. But Merrill Lynch's chief, John Thane, says that he still deserves a $10 million bonus this year. You know, it's one thing to think that. It's another thing to have the gall to say it out loud. Perhaps Mr. Thane has not heard of the plight of Republic Windows and Doors in Chicago. Republic is a manufacturer that shuttered its factory on Friday after Bank of America elected not to extend a loan to keep the company going. Mr. Thane's $10 million bonus would be just what the doctor ordered to keep Republic's doors open or it could make things about $33,000 easier for each of the 300 or so Republic Windows and Doors workers who were laid off with almost no notice last week without any severance or any compensation for any of their saved up and worked for benefits like vacation pay. The workers say that federal law should give them 60 days notice for layoffs. The company gave them three days. How have Republic's workers reacted? Well, they're sitting in refusing to leave the factory. Some stayed all weekend. Now they have been occupying the factory in eight hour shifts. They say they are guarding the assets inside the Northside Chicago plant, making sure the items inside the factory are not removed. They say the remaining equipment and windows and doors that they manufactured are the only collateral they have left in their effort to get what they feel they are owed. Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich, whose approval ratings make George Bush look like Santa Claus, has asked all Illinois government agencies to suspend business with Bank of America because B of A elected not to extend that loan to Republic to keep it going. Call it leverage or extortion or whatever you want, but Bank of America could reportedly lose out on hundreds of millions of dollars in fees and commissions from the state. The governor wants the bank to use some of its federal bailout money to resolve the protest and to help out the workers. As for our country's leadership, well, what a difference a new transformational president makes. Remember 1981 when Ronald Reagan fired nearly 12,000 members of the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization when they struck? They are in violation of the law and if they do not report for work within 48 hours they have forfeited their jobs and will be terminated. Well that was then, this is now. Here's what the new president says about the sit-in in in Chicago. When it comes to uh, the situation here in Chicago uh, with the workers who are asking for the benefits and, and payments that uh, they have earned, I think they're absolutely right. And I think that these workers, if they have earned these benefits and their pay, then these companies need to follow through on those commitments. That response to a question this weekend from President-elect Obama reportedly caused a spontaneous cheer to erupt from the Republic Windows and Doors workers who are watching his press conference from their shuttered factory. Joining us now is Mark Meinster, international representative of the United Electrical, Radio and Machine Workers of America, the union for the Republic Windows and Doors workers. He joins us live from Chicago along with Apolinar Cabrera, who has worked at the plant for 17 years. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Mark, let me start with you. Can you tell me uh, where you are exactly right now, uh, who the folks are, who you are with? And uh, we understand that tonight's meeting between the union and Bank of America and the company just wrapped up. What's the, what's the status now? Well, we're standing out here right outside the factory. Uh, we've got a bunch of supporters out here. Uh, you know, in fact, we've had thousands of supporters coming by, dropping off food, clothing, water, donations. Uh, all of the labor movement has come by. Uh, so that's been really great. Um, today's meeting uh, with the bank, um, it, it was productive. Um, we're going to reconvene uh, tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I would say we're uh, maybe whatever's one step below cautiously optimistic, but uh, that's better than yesterday. So. Uh, so we'll see. Mr. Cabrera, let me ask you, I know that you have worked at this plant for 17 years. Can you tell us a little bit about how you learned that the factory was closing and, and how much notice you had, you and your fellow workers there? 
Well, actually, we got a we got a meeting last week for, uh, with the company. You know, the all workers inside in the cafeteria. Those they, they, they told us that uh, um, Friday is going to be our last day. They're going to close the the plan. So. Then uh, uh, and, and that's it. So I I, I feel I feel angry. I feel bad. I, I I feel worried because I got family. I got kids. So how how I can uh, survive this situation right now? Especially uh, at this time of the year that you want to spend money with your family. You want to be happy with your family, with your kids, putting food on the table. So I, I feel terrible right now. But at the same time, I, I mean, we, we got a lot of support from a lot of people here in Chicago and a lot of, uh, I mean, congressmen here, a lot of aldermen, a lot of people, the media too. So we're going to continue fighting for this, for our rights. It's not just our rights. It's, I think it's American rights. It's not just us. It's, it's around. I think it's around the country that something something is wrong here right now. Mr. Cabrera and Mr. Meinster, um, it seems like the union is directing its anger and its demands, and uh, the uh, it's become the object of this ongoing demonstration, staying on at the plant. Uh, th those demands are being directed at the bank more than they are at the company, at Republic Windows and Doors. Can either of you explain why that is? Well, look, um, we've got problems with the company as well. Uh, you know, the CEO of this company is lying to us, uh, and we're not sure the bank's been telling us the truth either. But uh, we do know one thing. In a plant closing situation, uh, the bank controls the assets. And Bank of America, especially having gotten $25 billion in bailout funds, they're set to get another $10 billion uh, in the next bailout. Uh, they've got the power to step in uh, and do the right thing and resolve this situation. So uh, that's why we're taking our case to the bank. I will just for the in the in the uh, in, in the bank's interest. I will note that Bank of America has in issued this statement. They've said Republic Windows and Doors should do all it can to honor its obligations to its employees and minimize the impact of failure on those employees. As a creditor of the company, we continue to honor all of our agreements with the company and have provided the maximum amount of funding we can under the terms of our agreement. Uh, Mark, just getting out of this negotiation with the bank and with the company, does it seem like Bank of America is willing to be part of the solution? Here, or are they washing their hands of this? Well, um, all the parties at the meeting agreed uh, that in any resolution, the workers should come first. Uh, so really, that's in their hands. Uh, we'll see what happens after this meeting tomorrow. Uh, we're hopeful, but if uh, we don't come to a resolution, uh, we've got a massive protest planned for Wednesday at noon uh, in Chicago. Mr. Cabrera, one last quick question. Um, did you hear yes. this weekend that President-elect President Barack Obama expressed his support for you at the factory? Were you encouraged by that position? Uh, I mean, uh, like I told you, I feel strong with that. With that. I mean, uh, when the president said that it's, it's behind us, so I felt that it's time to fight for, for, for my family, for me, for our, our workers here for workers around the country because I know it's a bad economy, it's a, it's a situation that uh, everybody now is suffering around the country. But at the same time, I can tell you that uh, I'm going to continue here as long as it's going to take to fight for this, for, for my rights. So I'm going to continue here fighting for that. Uh, Polinar Cabrera, who has worked at Republic Windows and Doors for 17 years, and Mark Meinster, the international representative of the United Electrical, Radio, and Machine Workers of America, uh, the union for the workers there. Um, good luck to you, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you.